If Jimmy is on the roster when you get to camp, how do you envision that playing out? I mean, would it be a competition, or have you got that far? Definitely haven't got that far. Um, but, yeah, we'll figure that out. It would be something. I mean, he'd be on our team, so you'd have to – I mean, Jimmy's a good quarterback, so that he's not easy for anyone to beat out. And uh, that was tough. Trey wasn't ready to beat him out last year. Uh, we'll be definitely closer to that this year if it happens, but it's something that we want to have to worry about the training camp. And uh, usually when you have a situation like that, it – Makes everyone better, anyways. All right, your thoughts. Well, I think he's pivoted off the stance, which we can argue till we're blue in the face how they got here and how they had the owners' meetings, which is several weeks after free agency, and Jimmy is still on the roster. Regardless, they're here. His stance the entire 2021, and to his credit, he was not lying. He told the truth, and he did not pivot from it. Jimmy Garoppolo is our starting quarterback. And there were times when it pissed a lot of people off. I would imagine, and some people have surmised, that internally some people disagreed at times, I think. And there might have been some coaching departures that not everyone was always on the same page, which is natural sometimes in these situations. Uh, Definitely on the outside, it was a controversial topic up and down from a football standpoint. He did not say that. He said... He was given the chance to say, well, if Jimmy's still here, he'll still be the starter, as he's been the starter for the last however many years since the middle of 2017 when we acquired him. He, To me, if you read between the lines on this one, he's basically saying it's over for Jimmy here without saying that because he still has some value to maintain. But I, if you are in the Trey Lance camp and ready to see the transition in a weird way because – Jimmy's still on the team. I, I do think it's fair to say that, like, the Jimmy era is over in his mind, the way he's just talked about it, right? Yeah. So there are two ways that coaches talk about competitions, right? One's real competitions and one's fake staged competitions with a determined outcome. And last year was probably a fake staged competition with a determined outcome. And that determined outcome was Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be our quarterback. And I actually supported, like, Trey's got to go take the job from Jimmy Garoppolo. That team had a Super Bowl um, attitude. And, you know, do you, do you, do you think most coaches would have done that given Jimmy's status with the team in the league? I think most coaches would have done what Kyle did, not because of Jimmy's status, but because here's Trey Lance who's played one football game and it was, you know, FCS football in a year and a half, basically. And I know Jimmy Garoppolo can execute what I need to execute. And I just came off a bad year and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to want to trade him. I think there were a lot of reasons to play Jimmy Garoppolo last year. I, and I, I think agree. you could, yeah, I mean, you can make a good case to play Trey, but in that quote, uh, what Kyle says is also, he talks about competition, but just like last year, when he talked about competition, he's also talking about competition. I think with a predetermined outcome, except it's flipped this year. The predetermined outcome is Trey Lance is our starting quarterback and competition is not so much about motivating Jimmy or motivating Trey as it is about, you know, whatever smoke screens there are left to be played, being played. And the Niners are clearly going to play out the string with this thing. They are not going to just cut him. They've said it many times. Their actions are showing it. But they're also not going to announce to the world Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be deactivated uh, from camp or we're not going to, he's not going to practice. And then we'll cut him on the last day before the regular season begins when his contract becomes guaranteed. So I think Kyle has a long established track record of only saying what he has to say. I'm with you. I mean, I, I do think he's put enough breadcrumbs, if you want to call them that, out there that says uh, that Jimmy Garoppolo is not getting the same treatment this year that Jimmy Garoppolo got last year. I, I do just think it's probably the most unique position in sports because truly only one guy plays. You can't rotate him at all. And that guy is dependent on everyone looking at that guy, the team, the media, the fans, right? Let's say Joey Bart. He's Buster Posey's replacement, starting catcher for the Giants game one. Well, what if they also carry a catcher that can hit left-handed, right? And that, you know, they're going to platoon, and that guy ends up playing the same amount of games as Joey Bart, right? In basketball, the way Steve Kerr has handled Jordan Poole and Kaminga, like, everyone kind of plays. You saw it last year with Brandon Ayuk. Quarterback, you, you can't really play that game, right? And we saw it last year. There is, once Jimmy was the guy, like, Jimmy was the guy until he got injured. And even with the injury, they put him right back. Like, you kind of I, – I, I'm a believer. You can – the way – with the rookie quarterback, it is a little complicated because you do, in fairness to any coach, this goes back to Urban Meyer with Trevor Lawrence last year. That's probably a bad example. But every other coach with their rookie quarterback, 
and just any coach getting a new quarterback, you got to like get on the same page in OTAs and see what the guy knows. Kyle knows, like he's been around him for a year now, right? You want to hit this period whenever they first step on the field after the draft and start running legitimate practices. Like this is the guy, right? That's I would say all 32 coaches go. I want to have my starting quarterback. It's why a lot of coaches name that like bridge guy. You saw Nagy do it last year, just so we just get the guy, get off and running. And it's not because like Justin Fields is on the sideline just drinking water. It's just so we know there's a hierarchy to the day, starting with that guy. Right. Remember Carson Palmer told me that the thing he missed the most about being a quarterback is like every day you walk in as the starting quarterback in the building, like every fucking one's looking at you. Yeah. On Tuesday, Saturday, it's just there is something like Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams. Like it's pretty obvious. Like we're going to go as far as this little guy takes us, right? right? The moment he transfers in. And I do think Kyle has been around this long enough. Like you do need to pivot all in. It's weird because I think as long as Jimmy's on the roster, he has to kind of pick his battles the way he publicly talks about it. I do think, though, when if you and I go to an OTA practice and he's sweet, I, I think he'll be a little less like worried about what's coming out about being pro Trey because it won't necessarily be about Jimmy. Yeah. But and just attack Trey as being like that kind of the entity of him being the starting quarterback. Talking about right? him like we, we're going to, we, we are going, our, how good we are depends on how good this guy is. Not, yeah. I might. Because here, Corey on the stream says, and, and, heard, the, pl- and the players, I, I would imagine, like the Debo and the Kittle and the Trent Williams, and even the what, what is like Jimmy Ward saying about like that's it's going to be very telling during OTAs being a practice and then the vibe of those guys, like because right. they know what it looks like now, right? Yep. At the yep. highest of high levels. Uh, Corey says, I heard gamesmanship in Kyle's answer. Good QBs are really hard to find, some teams don't even have one. Kyle did say that, but then he also said, We have three, which kind of throws off that they don't have one because if somebody else had Sudfeld. You know, you wouldn't. They would be a candidate to trade for Jimmy Garoppolo if Nate Sudfeld was their starting quarterback. So guy, it, inv- it invalidated it a little bit. <laughs> guy, uh, Kyle, Nate Sudfeld is known as the guy that the Eagles got blamed for for tanking a football game. That is the person that you just played two million dollars. The entire NFC East believed that him coming into a game was them doing trust the process and taking. That is they don't ever forget that. You believe that in was them, John. Nate Sudfeld. <laughs> uh Breer, Niners Kyle Shanahan asked if the natural progression is for trade to start this year. That's why we looked into trading Jimmy. <laughs> they tried to trade the guy. They traded two ones and another one for Trey. Then they tried to trade Jimmy and Jimmy Garoppolo would not be on this roster if he uh had not had a shoulder surgery. So you know, I, here's the other thing about this is if Kyle Shanahan really thought Trey Lance wasn't quote unquote ready to play, like if he thought I can't win, I can't win five games with this guy. Do you think Jimmy Garoppolo would be his quarterback this year? Uh, I think there's a decent, I think probably 85, 90% unless he ch- pivoted during OTAs that Jimmy Garoppolo would be the starting quarterback. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if, if he thought Trey couldn't win him five games, Jimmy Garoppolo would be his quarterback this year. Cool. Right. Sorry. I, yeah. Papa just texted me 215. <laughs> so that's a, that's a good reason to, to be texting. But I, I like if, if he thought, I don't think he's trading Jimmy because everyone in the organization told him, Kyle, you have to trade Jimmy, even though you don't want to. He had now he, he may not agree. think Trey's as good as Jimmy today, but I think he thinks Trey's good enough. Again, he traded up to get he. They, they did this. So, and, and, and I do think any time that you make a move like this to acquire a young player, whether that be, you know, you draft really high and you get Herbert, you trade up for, you know, like they did with Deshaun Watson and, and Patrick Mahomes, like they did with Josh Allen, like the 49ers just did with uh, Trey Lance. I, I don't think you can just, and I know Kyle probably struggles with this, but I bet the front office does not. This is like a four-year odyssey slash project, right? Not just the player to improve, but just the way we build our team, the way we use his cap space. That's it, it's a it's it's a four year endeavor, right? Like the worst case, like we saw it with Mitch Trubisky. Like you you just kind of get the four year window. So it's not for as much as we're going to be hyped up once the schedule comes out. It's like Niner Seattle Week One or what, whoever they're playing. Like it's really about the next. 34, whatever 34 plus 17 is. The next three seasons, right? Trey on a second, third, and that fourth year. So, I mean, this year is enormous, and the Niners have are going to have crazy expectations, more than likely for a first-year 
starting quarterback. But it's really the next couple years to build this thing around him. But the only way for him to like be good in a couple years is for him to start building off it, now getting all the reps. Like ultimately, yeah. that is one thing that Herbert, you would say Mahomes, they they traded Alex, Lamar became the starter. Like it was they didn't even have to worry about any of this stuff, right? You know, coming into their second year OTAs. There wasn't another guy around. Now, luckily, this guy, even if he's on the roster, probably won't be quote unquote around. But it's you would say it's it's not ideal, but it's not totally weird. But it's somewhere in the middle. Like there's still something. He still yeah. Trey still is gonna get asked about Jimmy Garoppolo still being on the on the roster when he talks. Right, right, right. right. And if that's the way you know, Kyle said Trey's a confident guy, he can handle all this stuff. So uh Jay says, I'm just wondering if no one wanted Jimmy at his price, wouldn't you start taking less in hopes you get a contract somewhere? I mean, as we get closer to the season and Jimmy Garoppolo's still on the 49ers, that 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 question really comes into play, right? Like, what is Don Yee telling teams Jimmy Garoppolo's willing to do if they acquire? Like, if Don Yee tells somebody Jimmy Garoppolo's willing to play for $5 million, well, then all of a sudden, maybe the Niners' market gets a little better. I don't know if you saw, was it the Saints today that signed Andy Dalton? $3 million bucks. So they're going to have two starting quarterbacks for under $10 million. What are they paying Mariota? Five or whatever it is? Uh, maybe I'm too low on Mariota's number, but who wait? Oh, sorry. Mario's on the Falcons. The Jameis. Yeah. Jameis. So, and Taysom's going to the, to tight end, which actually kind of helps the tight end comps. But, um, you know, you could put Mariota, Jameis, Andy Dalton's probably a little less gifted, but all those guys are in the same. And that's where Jimmy and Don, would be like, we're better than these guys. Well, totally. But But, But Jimmy is headed. If it doesn't go well for like that type of life. Right, you know, in a couple years, it's not crazy to think that Jimmy Garoppolo is treated like a Mariota, Andy Dalton in a couple years, right? If yep. it doesn't go well, he's a bad season away from being kind of an eight million dollar backup, and then if just who knows, you know, he's to me he's closer to that than ever getting like a three or sixty million dollar contract right now. Yep, I agree. Given that, like, where's he? It's not where are the good situations he's going to. Yeah. I'm just. I think the point is what he's willing to take is going to affect how this thing plays out. I, I would say Jimmy is 100 percent better than Jameis. The 49ers would not have made the playoffs with Jameis Winston. I, I'm pretty confident on that. Uh, I agree with that, but I also could see a team more interested in trying Jameis out for a year than trying Jimmy out for a year. Now the Colts wouldn't do that. The Colts would rather have Jimmy, but the Saints, you know, with Sean Payton, maybe they'd rather have Jimmy. But I. I could see te- a team more likely to give Jameis a shot than to give Jimmy a shot, depending on where you are. I'd say Jimmy's probably 14 to 18 range in the league, and I'd say Jameis is probably like 17 to 22 range. I mean, they're in the same. They probably have more similarities than not. 